Today's topic was meant to be something else originally, but while I was playing, I kind of stumbled across this more or less, and I figured I'm going to do this video first today. And that is the fundamentals of building in Smite. If you're experienced with Smite, then this will not be news to you at all, hopefully. So this is aimed at beginners of the game that really don't know how to build yet and how to put a build together on a character yet and are trying to do their first steps in that regard. So if you've been playing for a while, maybe this is something you can send to your new friends. So we're going to start with some physical characters and then we're going to look at some magical characters and just get the overarching idea, really. I'm not going to specifically tell you what to build on any character or something, but rather just give you an idea of how a build is formed and when what items are typically built. So at the start of the game, first of all, we actually um, have one relic that we can choose. So for example, a typical relic on many characters across pretty much all roles would be Purification Beads. Um, this is something we would build at the start of the game. The second slot is initially the extra ward that you can use until level 12. And then you can build a second relic here. So this is something you want to get out of base. By the way, if you're new, don't get meditation most of the time. It's usually not the best option. And then along with that, we typically want to get a starter item. So outside of Conquest, we have a few more options. In Conquest, you have Assassin's Blessing, Attack as, uh, Assassin's Blessing, uh, Guardian's Blessing, Hunter's Blessing, and Mage's Blessing, as well as Warrior's Blessing. And then in other modes, you have Attacker's Blessing, which is frequently used Defender's Blessing not so frequently used, and Specialist also not so frequently used. So you choose the one uh, according to the role that you're playing, in Conquest at least, and usually in other game modes you will choose Attacker's Blessing on most characters, because it's so strong unless you're playing a very tanky one. Now you don't have to build a starter item, there are certain build paths that avoid starter items. Uh, an example here would be going into Transcendence and starting with Charged Morningstar, but typically, in most situations, it's advisable to start with a starter item. So we have a Hunter here right now, we're using a Moosen Cup to build, so we're gonna use Hunter's Blessing. So we select that, and that is what we built. At this point, it depends a little bit on what type of character you're playing. The uh, situation here is a little bit different with a tank, uh, but most characters will start with the first rank, the tier one of a damage item. So for example, at this point, we could build uh, the Morning Star, or on a Hunter, we would also often see Spiked Gauntlet. This is because that allows us to get uh, the tier 3 item quicker, which is especially important for stacking items. The earlier you finish up a stacking item, you qu the quicker you can start stacking this item, and the quicker you have the finished item, basically. So we we'll just uh, use Spike Garden as an example here to build that. And then, along with that, you also want to get some potions. So we have a healing potion here, usually, and depending on the character, you might also add some mana potions. Not necessarily always the case on hunters. Some hunters can get away without mana potions entirely. I prefer these two over getting uh, multi-potions on most characters. There's some exceptions uh, regarding soul lane. And also it's worth keeping in mind if there's a Baron Sandy on the team, then uh, you would have another consumable option here, uh, which is Baron's Brew, which you should probably take over normal potions because it's, it's uh, reusable essentially. So this is just the main structure of how a build will look like right at the start of the game before you leave base, roughly. Sometimes like this, sometimes like this, but uh, something like that. And, and sometimes you will also have, have more of these. So it really depends on the amount of, of gold you have left, what, like, uh, what other items you start with and uh, what character you're playing. But the general idea is, is somewhere around this and you want to have as many health potions as possible, in my opinion, uh, before you leave base, so whatever gold is left goes into healing potions, so that you have a way to heal up as well. Now after that, the typical build path is either to first finish up your stacking item, this is if you can get away with it, so instead of uh, having Spine Gauntlet, you would at that point have Devour's Gauntlet, or alternatively, you could at this point build your boots, and then you would have uh, this first and then afterwards you would finish your Devourous Gauntlet. So, well, auto switches around like that, but you get the idea. So, which one you go for here first um, is situational. 
I would generally recommend going for boots first most of the time because it is just a little bit more safe, I would say, and it gives you some reliable clear with most character. And I think that's generally more helpful. Now at this point, it was first of all important to notice what you typically do not do in Smite compared to, to other MOBAs especially is you do not build many tier one items. So sometimes we'll see new players doing something like building this and then building this, or maybe a hunter item at least, and then building this, and then the build ends up looking like this. And that is something you absolutely do not want to do in Smite because the tier one items are still somewhat pricey and the stats are not as or not nearly as efficient as fully finished items. So tier one is the first stage, then you have the tier two stage, and then a tier three. You always want to get to tier three as quickly as possible. And the only exception here is that you sometimes leave this one on tier one uh, and finish the boots first. This is because the tier one boots are not exactly the first, the best thing to start in lane with for many characters because it doesn't give you extra damage, it just gives you movement speed. So after this point, everything you do, you, you always want to finish up the full item before you start building into the next one. For almost any situations, there are very few exceptions where you would m maybe decide to, to skip the third level of an item or something, or you have to prioritize another item. But those are very rare instances that is stuff you don't have to worry about at the start. So at this point, um, you're basically going into into whatever items you want to build. Um, realistically, now you could go into attack speed items, into into more power items. It, really, that's up to you at this point. It's it's very flexible and really depends on the current uh, meta in that regard. I would say, like I, I'd refer you to to other uh, build guides for that specific role, rather or for that specific character, rather than following along with this anymore. So it could, for example, be that at this point I build a Talentus Bow. Then I would also hit level 12 at some point, which means I would get a second relic. Uh, often this would be Aegis Amulet for beginners as well. And there's something important to note here as well, and that is that these two have upgrades. You can upgrade them for 500 gold and uh, that gives them additional benefits. However, these additional benefits are usually not worth it in early stages of the game. Again, there are exceptions where you could justify that and if you're especially looking towards a relic like Cursed Ankh, then the upgrade actually does a lot and it will do even more uh, on the next patch. But on most characters, you want to have at least all items built here before you consider upgrading the relics in most situations, unless it's very, very urgent that you need a specific benefit more often. Otherwise, you're just delaying the rest of your build, which typically is more important because those items will in effect have an effect on you all the time, whereas relics have an effect on you once every whatever, 100 seconds, 130 seconds, 160 seconds, depending on the relic. So that is the overarching structure. That is how you roughly want to build. And uh, yeah, depending on the, the exact uh, character, there will be some differences. So if we, for example, look at the same thing on a magical character instead, then we would maybe start uh, with uh, Mage's Blessing. And here we could start with a tier one item of a, of a penetration item. Uh, that's very common at the moment. Or we could also start uh, with a stacking item. I think in the long run, stacking items might just be encouraged. Again, they're the more standard typical approach. So I'm just gonna go with that uh, for the purpose of this video lasting a little bit longer than just the current meta. So maybe this would be like a start where you start with Spellbook. Uh, and then you would again uh, go into your boots and uh, at that point you just build whichever boots you prefer for your character and yeah in the order here you'd have these you'd also obviously build uh, the relic again you'd also start with with the same consumables again i'm just gonna do it just for the sake of complete clarity here just so i, I don't skip over it so we would again have purification beats at the start of the game would also again get uh, some health potions, we'll again get some mana potions if we can fit it in. Uh, a bit more important on mages in my opinion than on physical characters actually because they often use a fair bit more mana at the start of the game to even clear the wave, to even make, make room for themselves to actually make any plays. So, and after that, if you finish the boots uh, first, you would then upgrade the, the spell book here and you would again uh, go into a stacking item, into Book of Thoth so that you can get full stacks. So that would be this one. Um, 
and the actual order they will look like would be this one. But there could also be situations where you just say, okay, I want to build the spell book and I want to upgrade the stacking item right away. I want to go into Book of Thoth and then build my boots afterwards. But that's very, very risky. Again, something I would not advise uh, to beginners. I would say build the spell book first, build the shoes of focus, and then go into Book of Thoth. And now something that is a little bit more prominent with uh, mages, which is why I want to point it out at this part, is that in your build you want to have a few specific stats. You want to have some power and you also want to have some penetration in most builds. And uh, there are two different components here. On one hand you want to have flat penetration, so that's just something where it says 15 magical penetration, that will be flat penetration. Um, and on the other hand you also want to have a decent amount of percentage penetration, which is something you can, for example, see here, uh, the 20% magical penetration, or you can see it here, um, the 10% magical penetration. So at some point of the build, you typically want to have items with percentage penetration as well. Um, this is so, okay, this doesn't actually let me build it until I have the book build. Um, this is so that you will deal more damage to tanks and more damage to enemies uh, with lower defense because penetration works very effectively uh, in combination with the base damage of your ability. That is maybe too complex for a beginner at this point. That is something that I can discuss in more detail in another video. But I think it's important to note that if you are going your own build ways, it's not advisable to just go for pure power all the time. You want to look that you have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that applies for pretty much any role. But hunters, for example, can get away uh, without flat penetration. Uh, in some situations and that is why I didn't mention it in that part but yeah well especially for assassins and mages you want to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that when uh, looking at the tanks it's a little bit different we can do that now but after that again there's a lot more flexibility just make sure you finish your items up first uh, make sure you get your second relic at level 12 and make sure that you look towards getting full build before you upgrade your relics and at the end of the game where if you had full build here right if, if we just say whatever i'm just gonna click some some random stuff if you say we just had this and um we finished we sold our starter item which we can do at the end of the game that's also something that frees up a slot and we build this whatever it doesn't matter uh, just random items really uh, then we can also look to get some consumables right then we can get a a potion of power which will give us um I can't actually build it, but it will actually give us extra power and cooldown reduction. And uh, likewise, you can get uh, more consumables here. You can get uh, Elixir of Power, which increases your power even more, and Elixir of Defense, which increases your protections by a lot and it decreases the damage taken from structures as well. So these are really, really late game, but really, really good. They're really expensive as well. You only want to build them after you have full build. And uh, then you also have the Alexia of Speed. The Alexia of Speed allows you to sell your boots and instead of your boots, get another item here. Because boots are mainly built for their movement speed. They have some nice stats, but the movement speed is the most important part. And uh, if you get to the point where that's not necessary anymore, uh, where you want to have something better, then you can buy this Alexia of Speed for a lot of money. Um, and you can then use the item slot here for something else. But make sure you have saved up enough to buy both the other item and Alexia of Speed, because otherwise you might just lose stats in between, because these boots still have a decent amount of stats. They still have uh, 55 power here and 10% cooldown reduction. That is not something to scoff at. That is at least equal to a tier 2 item, roughly. So unless you can afford a tier 3 item and an Alexia of Speed together, I probably would not trade things out. And if we're looking over to the tanks, then things stay relatively similar, um, actually both in, in solo and support as well. Uh, what is different here often is that like in support you will start with Guardian's Blessing, uh, in solo you would start uh, with a Warrior's Blessing, uh, so either this or that. But what is different here is that often in the beginning you will buy other items along with that. So what you, for example, can see uh, in Solo at the moment, again, this is something that could change, uh, especially the current meta in Solo is actually evolving in a way we might not even see Warrior's Blessing anymore, we might actually see different starts. But uh, what we often see is them going into the tier one shoes right away to finish up shoes 
as quickly as possible. And then also uh, getting a, well, either a chalice of healing here, um, which brings us to a total uh, price point of 1,500 at that point, which would be all the gold. Or what we also can often see is just a, so just a mix of, of potions here together. Um, throwing this together. Um, and there's also a new start now that includes Hand of the Gods sometimes, but rarely, very rarely. I wouldn't really recommend that. Um, brother, this is often something we see in support. So what you'd see instead is um, something like this for support. Um, we can also see that you start with a defensive item and you start with your boots. You obviously get your relic as well. Um, typically a more defensive relic. So you could, for example, get a shell. Um, and then you can get uh, slightly different consumables here. This can help you clear the first camp uh, before you even go to the wave. Or if you're in solo and you go for all these chalices or these potions, you can just sustain a lot more. Depends on the exact meta, but I just wanted to make clear that's a bit of a difference here because there are more frequent starts here with boots for both roles because for both roles mobility is a factor in different ways whereas the other roles need the early damage most of the time in solo it's not even as much about the mobility and more about the gold that you have left after this because it allows you to buy more pots and in support it's well about whichever you want to look at and last but not least we also have the junglers um, where we can see very similar picture again where you often will start with an early power item so for example a very frequently built item is, is mace at the start of the game which just gives you a little bit of extra power because again this helps you clear the first camps um, alternatively you could also start with the boots um, which is done sometimes sometimes people get more potions but typically you can build I'll show you that. I'll show you what you can build. You can build exactly this with the gold. You can build Assassin's Blessing, 700 gold, Mace, 1,350 gold, uh, Healing Potion, 1,400 gold, and then Hand of the Gods, 1,500 gold. So this is exactly the amount of, of gold that you have at the start of the game. Uh, and this allows you to clear the jungle earlier, quicker, which is very important as a jungler, uh, sustain sufficiently with a little bit of healing and have more damage against camps. Good. again go boots here and then you could get some more potions but it's just typically not what what is preferred right now and yeah i think that is everything that i want to include in a basic overview um what i would also want to mention is that in the early stages on most characters even if they focus on attack speed so if you for example have a character that builds a ninja tabby attack speed boots You'll often see at least one power item being built on them. Like even if they, if they generally speaking, are more towards the attack speed focused side, it's typically not the call to go for say an item like Ikival right away. It can work. Uh, you you can try it. I'm sure uh, there are ways to make it work. Um, or something like Haste and Katana as well. But typically. With the exception of some very janky strategies for Odysseus Bow, which I would also not recommend, um, you want to go for power. If you have one power item in your build, for, for, for a jungler that could, for example, be something like Jordan's Wrath or Crusher, which is even mi mixed, so this is actually uh, something where you even get some attack speed, uh, or for, for a hunter it would be something like Transcendence instead, that'll kind of kickstart your build in a different way, because in the beginning, the power does so much for clearing camps with abilities especially and yeah that's it for this overview this should hopefully give you a bit of a better idea on what part of what item you might want to build uh, at some point and my goal is that effectively what i will try and and, and not see anymore as few in the future are, are builds that look like this that is exactly why i made this video um or builds that have two upgraded relics before anything else is done because I think uh, you're setting yourself back a lot by doing that. And if you end up building like that a lot, you might be better off trying to use the auto build a little bit longer, the auto build function, which is not completely terrible anymore. And uh, then try to figure things out a little bit better. Yeah, that's it for this video. 
I hope this was uh, interesting, insightful, helpful if you're new to the game. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of other smart content, content as well, is what I wanted to say. I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out. <laughs>